Hello everybody and welcome to your 29th chapter in your Java E7 tutorial series. In this tutorial, we'll be talking about JAX RS and how it makes it easy for developers to build RESTful web services using the Java programming language. So starting off, what are RESTful web services? These web services are loosely coupled, lightweight, and works well for creating APIs for clients spread out across the internet. REST or representational state transfer is basically the architecture of sending resources through REST requests or responses. In the REST architecture, almost everything can be considered a resource. Like for example, weather forecast data, the location of a city, how many houses are in a neighborhood, etc. The data could be held as an XML file, image file, HTML document, etc. These resources can be called using the uniform resource identifiers, or the URIs, which are typically links on the web. You can do anything to a resource once you have it in your hands. You could read it, edit it, or destroy it entirely. So let's take a look at the principles of RESTful applications. The following principles allow RESTful applications to be simple, lightweight, and fast. So first, resource identification through URI. These URIs correspond to every resource, allowing each resource to be unique and quickly available. And then there's resource manipulation. So resource manipulation uses create, read, update, and delete operations. Basically what this means is it uses a put to create a new resource, delete to delete a, new, uh, a resource, get to retrieve a resource the way it was found, and post similar to get, but it applies its own state onto a resource. Then there's diverse representation. So resources are separated or decoupled from their representations, allowing you as the client to see the resources any way you wish, whether that be in HTML, XML, plain text, PDF, uh, JPEG, JSON, and other document formats. Metadata of the resource is also kept for use in caching, detecting transmission errors, or authentication, to name a few. Then there's stateful interactions. HTTP itself is stateless, which means that whenever you request for something, the response is given and the previous request is discarded for the next request. This could be a problem if you wish to continue the history of this request response pairs. There are a few workarounds on this problem though, like cookies or URL rewriting, but RESTful applications can be part of the solution. Now, real world examples. Most blog sites actually use RESTful web services. These sites contain downloading XML files that contain links of lists of other resources and other websites and web applications that use the REST-like developer interface uh, to like manage data. It, it includes like Twitter, Amazon S3, which is simple storage service, with Amazon S3, buckets and objects can be created, listed, and retrieved using either a REST-style HTTP interface or a SOAP interface. All right, so let's take a look at creating a RESTful root re uh, resource class. So first of all, root resource classes are POJOs, which basically mean plain old Java objects that are just classes in the Java code that are either, either annotated with the at path or including at least one at path uh, or a request method designator. These rec request method designators are, for example, at get, at post, at post, or uh, delete, creating a resource method. So developing a RESTful uh, web service with JAXRS. JAXRS is a Java programming language API designed to make it easy to develop applications that use the REST architecture. It uses annotations to simplify the development process of creating RESTful web services, and developers can decorate their Java classes pulling resources and using them whenever they wish. Once these annotations are put in place and the program is run, the API then creates and deploys all the ne resources necessary. So the following over here, let's take a look at some sample code. Uh, this is a lot, but let's just simplify it over here. First, let's we can see that this at path hello world tells us where this Java class can be accessed. This is a partial URI, which means that uh, whenever you're putting a URI in your Google Chrome or like um, Mozilla Firefox, uh, you're putting the HTTP something something, and then you do put slash, and then this slash will include the hello world. Then there's the at get, get, which is our request method designator, which makes this entire method a resource method. And then there's the at produces 
uh, annotation, which specifies the media type the client will be viewing this as. In this case, you will be seeing this code in an HTML format. All right, so let's take a look at configuring JAXRS applications. You can configure J JAXRS applications in one of two ways, either using a subclass of java.x.ws.rs.core.application or adding a servlet mapping tag in the web.xml file. So using a, sub, a subclass, you can add this to your class. And uh, basically what this does is it tells that this uh, class is, uh, is an application path and it uses this URI. Or, and you can add this to your class as well, which, uh, which is a get classes, which is an override, which is actually necessary for you to run this entire thing. Okay, so next, let's take a look at our servlet mapping web.xml. So to add this tag, all you got to do is put this in your web.xml. So make sure that you, um, all the servlets that are under this name have the URL pattern web, uh, web API, or you can add your own thing. Or, uh, and you can also add this to your web.xml too. All the stuff that like use the application like servlet or the application interface and add all the servlets that have that. Okay, so let's take a look at creating a simple RESTful web service. Okay, so in our NetBeans, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different here. Uh, make sure that you install the tutorial archetypes that we described in um, episode two of this tutorial series. And once you're done with that, let's go into our NetBeans and let's create a simple web application using the JAXRS service archetype, Maven archetype. This archetype creates a very simple hello world web application. So first let's click file and let's click new project. So let's go ahead and new project. And uh, inside here, you can pick from your categories. You go down and you can select, uh, let's see, we want Maven. Yes, Java with Maven. And let's go to our projects and select the project from archetype. So let's go over here and go into project from archetype. Go ahead and click next. And under search, uh, enter Jax RS uh, service. There we go. And select Jax RS archetype and click next. So under the project name, enter hello world application. So let's go ahead and do that. Hello world application. Okay, so uh, then we can go to our project location and you can see that our project location is here. I just put it users VJ tester and uh, you can set the package name to, let's say, let's, let's do it some, something like uh, Java EE tutorial because it's a tutorial and I spelled tutorial, right? Uh, tutorial dot hello. All right, and click finish once you're done. All right, so once a project is created, let's go to our source packages, Java EE hello, and let's go into hello world.java. Here you will see your get, XM, uh, uh, get HTML. And uh, over here, you can see that you can replace your uh, HTML with your own HTML, but this HTML will have to do over here. So let's go ahead and start our Glassfish server and you'll see how this works. Go ahead, uh, click start. And once it's started, let's go ahead and right click and click build. And once it's built, let's go ahead, right click and click run. Go ahead and click your server, Glassfish server. Let's remember that. And it will go ahead and run in your and you'll see that you have hello over here. Now you can see how this RESTful web service works out. All it's doing is it's calling this hello application from your uh, Google Chrome, and it's doing it by calling this URI right here, hello world application. If we go back to our NetBeans, you'll see that this path is considered hello world application. So here you can see how the archetype generates a skeleton for the application and you simply need to implement the appropriate methods like we did over there. Now that we finished that, let's take a look at our RSVP example application. Internet beans, let's go ahead and clean this guy 
and let's go ahead and close him open your project so let's go ahead open project and go into let's see uh jacks rs rsvp and open a project okay so this example allows invitees to an event to indicate whether they will attend it or not let's go to our configuration bean which should be inside our source packages and let's take a look so config bean inside here you will see lots of stuff so this is a singleton session bean that initializes the data in the database that's literally all you need to know that's that's it that's all it checks for next there's the status bean which checks uh for so it exposes a JAX RS resource for displaying the current status of all invitees to an event. So what it does is it sees the current status, it checks if the invitee has said yes or no to the event, and it displays that to you. Then there is the response bean, which is over here. And you can see over here that this response bean what it's doing is it's exposing a JAX RS resource for setting an invitee's response to a particular event. What that means is, let's say a res uh, like an invitee, let's say you as the invitee say yes or no, uh, it will basically send it back to the server saying that yes, he wants to go to this uh, event or no, he doesn't want to go to the event. Knowing that, let's go ahead and click build. Uh, of course, knowing that your Glasses server is um, like on and running. Okay, so once it has finished, there we go. And let's go ahead and click run. Once again, click your server, glass your server, remember permanently, please. And it will run it in our Google Chrome. Okay, so you can see that, first of all, you'll see that event name is Duke's birthday party. The location, you can find that it's the top of Mark. I have no idea what that is. And you can see the event status where you can see that um, the father of Java is attending, Duke of Java, there's no response yet, and Tux Penguin, there's no response yet. So you can go ahead and actually click on those, and you can update your status. So let's go ahead and let's say the father of Java is not attending and let's update the status and it's saying it's not attending here let's go ahead and see let's say duke of javas so he might be attending so let's update that and you'll see it's changed too you can go back to the main page and you can see back in event status that it's changed up and that's it that's all there is about JaxRS and building restful web services with it i hope you understand how it makes it extremely easy for developers to build the restful web services using the java programming language and i'll see you in the next video where we'll be talking about accessing rest resources using the JaxRS client api until then i'll see you in the next video